Hello, I'm Jules. I'm going to show you how to use StarkNet in 8. The first thing we're going to want to do is install both the Cairo plugin for compiling Cairo smart contracts as well as the StarkNet plugin for interacting with StarkNet. To do this, you run the command ape plugins install. You can give it the list of plugins, so Cairo and then StarkNet. Enter. Okay, great, both of our plugins have been installed successfully. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to configure the StarkNet plugin. This is my Ape config YAML file for my demo StarkNet project. I'm listing the two plugins I previously installed so it's easier to install them next time, StarkNet and Cairo. I'm also setting the default ecosystem to StarkNet. This makes it so we use StarkNet by default instead of Ethereum. Additionally, I'm declaring a deployment on the testnet network. This makes it easier to initialize my contract without having to redeploy it. Here is an example Cairo smart contract. It has a couple external methods on it. One for increasing a balance and then one for retrieving the balance. We are going to use this in our demo. Okay, now that we have both plugins installed and we have looked at our smart contract, we can begin interacting with this contract in our console environment. To launch the console, you do ape console network startnet local. This will use a local devnet provider as opposed to the alpha testnet Gorley provider or the mainnet alpha. Enter. Okay, now that we're in our console, we can deploy an account. Accounts are smart contracts in StartNet, so they need to be deployed. We can also deploy our bank contract. Bank equals project.bank deploy. Great, now we have a bank contract that we can interact with. Remember, there's two external methods, one for setting the balance and one for getting the balance. So we can do bank dot increase balance, the number one, two, three, four, and I'm going to use the account I just deployed as my sender. Looks like that worked. So let's make sure by doing bank dot get balance and it equals the amount that I increased it by. Okay, once you are satisfied with your smart contract logic, you can begin adding tests to make sure it functions correctly. You can see here I have five tests. This first test makes sure that when we try to increase the balance before the contract is initialized, that it will actually revert. And we are not specifying a revert message here and that's totally fine. The second one, this test makes sure that when we call initialize twice, that it will revert. And this time we are expecting a specific revert message of already initialized. Then we have some more standard tests. One that makes sure that when we call get balance, it's initialized to zero. And then once we increase the balance to 100 using our account, that the new balance will be 100. And by the way, the bank fixture and the account fixture are both defined in this conf test file. So our testing framework is built on top of PyTest. So PyTest fixtures are just groups of code that you can pass into your tests and scope it to a particular session, function, or module. We have the bank fixture and we have an account fixture. Okay. Finally, our last test here makes sure that when, the, when we call this method increase balance, that the balanced increased event gets emitted one time. We also ensure that the value 
passed into that event is 200. So let's run the tests. To run the tests, run the command ape test. Starting our Starknet DevNet process. Okay, the first three tests have passed. That is good. Okay, all five tests have passed. Thank you for watching this video on Ape Starknet. I hope it helps you build your Starknet applications and have a good night.